Yo, listen up, Rue is stepping up the game. Where fantasy Premier League runs in his veins. From transfers to captains, he's always on top. Guiding you through every game week nonstop. They say Rue got that style of flow. Welcome to the channel, enjoy the show. Wild cards, free hits with so much vibe. If you're hunting for success, then make sure you subscribe. Good day, mate. Welcome back to the channel. I'm FPL Rue, and welcome back to another FPL video. So in today's video, we're going to go in through the best possible 5.5 million defenders that you can bring into your team. And we're going to go through a few options. Obviously, um, with a 5.5 million defender, it is kind of mid-range, I'd say. It's not the 6 million plus mark, and it's not really the 4.55 million mark. So they're about mid-range, I'd say. So you really want a defender from a team that is probably at least half decent defensively because you're probably going to be want to play in them every week they're not a defender to kind of sit on your bench if you're new to the channel subscribe and smash a like on this video as well as it does help me out a lot we'll start off with Carl walker so 32 appearances for him last season now 30 starts so he's pretty much nailed us i'd say um, in them he got five assists so decent at assists and man city were actually very very good um for kind of defensively they finished second behind Arsenal as the best defence in terms of goals conceded. They conceded 34 goals um, and then expected goals was around the same 34 and they kept the second most clean sheets with 13. So defensively, they are really, really up there. Kyle Walker though, five assists is not a bad return to be honest, especially I think the way City play at the minute are kind of with four centre-backs. So you've got Ake on the left, the two centre-backs and then Kyle Walker can tuck in as well. So He's not really a, a wing back to say, so five assists is still pretty good. 16 shots, three on target. Um, like I said, City conceded 34. Kyle Walker missed a few games, so he only conceded 29. Um, and he got 10 clean sheets, so they kept two clean sheets while he was away. Um, the thing for me with Kyle Walker is you really want to look at his assists. And five assists is pretty good. And with the City's fixtures to start, probably about the, 10, about the 10 first games, they do look very, very nice for City. So obviously you've got Chelsea away, um, you've got Arsenal and you've got Newcastle in there as well. But other than that, you've got Ipswich at home, West Ham away, Brentford at home, Fulham at home, Wolves away, Southampton at home, Bournemouth away. So very, very good um, teams to get a clean sheet in. And for me, when you're bringing in a Man City defender, they're going to be a player that you're going to want to play every week. So I can definitely see teams that are going to have Kyle Walker in there, just leave him in there, play him every single week. And you know you're going to get at least, I guess, the top two most clean sheets in the whole in the whole league at the end of the season. And I think Kyle Walker's attacking enough to, to warrant that 5.5 million price mark. Obviously, though, there is a bit of an issue with City. You never really know if a player's nailed, but... To be honest, Carl Walker has been a player that has been nailed over the past few years and I think he will be nailed going into the next season as well. Let's get on to the next player, but before that, make sure you leave a comment what you think about Carl Walker. So next up, we've got Spurs' fullback Pedro Porro. He was actually the highest scoring defender um, around the mid-priced point. He got 136 points, so a pretty good season for him. And that was mainly due down to his attacking returns because Spurs didn't keep many clean sheets at all. Um, three goals, eight assists for him, which is a good return. He appeared in 35 games, which, again, pretty solid. I think he only missed, what, a few games, three games, obviously, but um, I'm pretty sure he started all of them 35 as well. With Pedro Porro, though, obviously, the attacking returns are good. Three goals, eight assists, and he should have got more goals, to be honest. Um, the amount of... Honestly, the amount of chances he had. I know he never really scored for the first half of the season. Then he got on in the FA Cup against Burnley. What a goal that was. And then towards the end of the season, he started picking up some goals as well. But he should have definitely got more. Like I said, the only thing with Spurs is their defence. They don't look good at all, to be totally honest with you. They conceded 61 goals last season, which is the sixth best. And an expected goal conceded was 63 um, which is 13. So really they should have conceded more goals and they only kept seven clean sheets. So it's not too bad. And I think coupled up with Poro's attacking threat probably makes up for it. But I actually 
see Spurs being a little bit better defensively this season. I think they've made a couple of additions in midfield with Archie Gray. Um, and I think the defence potentially having a clear run and not being injured, not being suspended. Because at one point, it was pretty much just... Yeah, it was pretty much just um, Pedro Porro and then a whole new back line because Romero was sent off in the Chelsea game. Uh, Van der Ven went off injured and then Udogi was sent off as well. So if they do have a run where they don't have a load of injuries and a load of suspensions, I can definitely see them bumping up them clean sheets to at least 10. And that coupled up with Pedro Porro's attacking returns, I think he can be a nice option to go for. Um, Spurs' fixtures are OK, I'd say, to start the season. But from game week 5 up until 16, which I don't have on screen here, their fixtures are so good, to be honest. They've got Brentford at home, Man United away, Brighton away, uh, West Ham at home, Palace away, Villa at home, Ipswich at home, City away, Fulham at home, Bournemouth away, Chelsea at home, Southampton away. So some really, really nice fixtures there. And even their opening two, to be honest, Leicester away, Everton at home, are very, very good games. So... I do really, really like Poro's, I guess, Poro for the start of the season and then potentially from game week five onwards. So if you can bench him maybe um, from, I guess, game week three and four, um, but game week, yeah, three and four, then I think he is a good option. Also, with Pedro Poro, like I said, he is attacking. Um, and I think with the new bonus point system, um, now that is kind of penalising um, defenders for conceding goals. It is a bit worried, but um, I still think he's worth bringing in if you do want to cover that Spurs defence. He is, prob for me, probably the best option to go for at 5.5 million. He's the most attacking in terms of getting forward. And yeah, I think he can be a nice option. And I do think Spurs will be a little bit better defensively this season. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and we'll move on to the next player. So next up, we've got a Newcastle defender who has got some decent attacking returns as well. We've got Fabian Scher, who is pretty much nailed for Newcastle. He played 36 times last season and he got four goals and three assists. So um, a decent return for a central defender. Obviously, as this video is titled, he does come in at 5.5 million, which for me is a little bit steep. I think he's just a little bit too expensive. I'd like to see him at probably 5 million. I think the fact that you can get Dan Byrne for 4.5 million, okay, Dan Burns not as attacking as Fabian Shaw. Yeah, 100% agree with you. But to save that whole million and cover the same defence and what lose a few goals a season, okay, if he gets four three and Dan Burns gets one or two, then fair enough. But yeah, I still think Dan Burns is a, is a good attacking threat as well. But let's talk about Share because he he is the better option. I just don't know if he's worth that one million. But like I said, he scored. Well, we got seven returns last season. He was the third highest scoring um, defender around the same price with 123 points. Newcastle defensively are not bad. They had a poor season last season, to be honest with you, defensively. Because he 62 goals, which was 13th in the league. And expected goals were 62 as well. So finished about 12th for expected goals. Um, however... In the season before that, they were kind of the, jo the joint best. They only conceded 33 goals um, with 41 um, expected. So they did have an off-season, I'd say. And that was down to a lot of injuries, again, for Newcastle. Um, they had some yeah rough rough injuries. And it obviously had a whole player on the whole team. And obviously, they were in the Champions League as well, which does pay, pay its toll on, on the team. I think they will have a better season defensively this season. I'm just not sure if Fabian Scher is worth the money. However... To start the season, he could be worth the money because their fixtures do look very nice. Southampton at home, Bournemouth away, Spurs at home, Wolves away, Fulham away. So a good start going to Southampton and Bournemouth. And then you've got, outside of Spurs, you've got Wolves away, Fulham at home. So pretty decent, I'd say. For me, I'd save the money personally. But if you did want to bring in someone like Fabian Scher... You don't actually have to play them every game. They do rotate well with Aston Villa defenders. So that is something to take into mind. If you have got the budget to rotate defenders, you can do that with um, Newcastle and Aston Villa. But for me, I'd save the money and go for Dan Byrne. But Cher is more nailed. Cher is more attacking. So if you do have the money, go for it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And we'll move on to the next player. 
So next up, we've got a player that probably none of us owned last season. It is Durian Timber. So the Arsenal, I guess, full-back, centre-back, midfielder. We're not sure where he's going to play yet because he's only played twice for Arsenal um, in, in the Premier League. So obviously, it's a bit pointless having these stats on screen here. But I just really wanted to highlight him because if he does play, he can be very, very attacking if he plays on that. I don't think he'll probably play right back because Ben White's got it covered, but potentially left back and centre back. He, he could be very, very attacking. I just wanted to point him out as well because Arsenal played against Bournemouth in a friendly game, a pre season game, and he did play centre back. So could that be a thing of, of signs to come? Who knows? But Arsenal's fixtures are not the best anyway to start the season. Wolves at home, Villa away, Bournemouth, at, Brighton at home. Um, Spurs away, City away. So that's really, really tough going to Spurs, City and Villa in the first five games away from home. Pretty tough if you ask me. Obviously, they have some very, very nice options for their backline Arsenal, especially with Califlori coming in as well. So for me, I'd stay well clear, but someone to maybe keep an eye on if he does start, if he does start games, then he can be very attacking. So yeah, maybe just a, a watch, but for now, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go anywhere near him, to be honest with you. So I did want to mention Carl Walker's teammate, Nathan Ake, because he's actually been very attacking as well. Two goals, three assists last season. He comes in at 5.5, as do a lot of the City defenders. So really, you could go with your favourite, John Stones, Ake, Akanji. They're all 5.5 million, even Jao Cancelo, if you think he's going to make a comeback. Obviously, with Ake... Probably not as nailed as Kyle Walker because you've got Gavardio as well that can play left back and centre back on that left side. Um, you've got a Kanji that can probably play there as well. So not as nailed as Kyle Walker, but still a very very good option. Again, with someone like bringing in like someone like a Kanji, uh, um, not Kanji, Ake, then or even a Kanji or even John Stones or even Kyle Walker or even Gavardio, you don't know they're nailed with City. So. It is tough to know um, until they start the season and maybe you can see a pattern forming. But for me, I'd probably say their starting back line is going to be Kyle Walker, is going to be probably Ruben Diaz, is going to be Ake and is going to be Gavardio. But for me, John Stones comes back into the picture now. You've got um, Cancelo potentially coming back. You've got Akanji as well in there. So it is tough to know. So for that reason, I'd probably stay clear of Nathan Ake. I'd probably go for Carl Walker because I do think he's more nailed. But Ake can be a nice option if you do see him starting games. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Um, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you in the next one.